Hello, welcome back to Blackjack. As you can probably guess by my rather <clears throat> low cast voice and irritated expression, I'm hoping I'm conveying irritation in some regard at least. This is not the first time I've attempted to do this. Yep, Revenge of Page Fault in Unpaged Area. I got to the end of Sora's encapsulation and then it froze. So, okay, let's just get back into this. Uh, I was explaining that I don't really have much experience with either one. I played the first Kingdom Hearts game and the extent of my experience with the Kid Icarus series is basically through um, Smash Bros and um, Captain N. I'm old. What can I say, I'm old. My birthday's next month, by the way, if anyone is so inclined. All right. If the fate of the universe is at stake, the last I person mean, you should trust to save it is a naive cartoon. teenager with magical weapons they don't Age understand. Master. But everybody does it anyway. Like Sora, yep. the Keyblade-wielding savior of Kingdom Hearts. Nothing like and Pit, the angel pit warrior pit from Kid Icarus. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Fighting in the Coliseum. Once upon a time, there was a small child, full of promise, named Sora. And he lived Hi, on the Sora. one and only Destiny Island. Sora and his friends Riku and Kairi grew up honing their athletic skills by playing sports with Final really Fantasy well. characters who don't judge Sora's fashion choices. He's Wait a minute, too. what the hell are Final Fantasy characters doing there? A hint of things to come. For the longest time, the residents of Destiny Island lived a peaceful life, but it wasn't long until a soulless embodiment of evil would invade yeah, the see, island. Him this being that was the heartless. Sense. But the arrival sense, of these yeah. creepy crawlers wasn't the only surprise. Alongside the darkness came light in the form of a keyblade, which is the key to fixing everything. Super subtle. This blade in particular was known as the Kingdom Key and was drawn to Sora thanks to his pure heart. With the Kingdom Key, <gasps> Sora had the means to combat the heart. the Kingdom Key By also the unlocking means doors? Doors? Well, yes, the Keyblade can get past almost any lock out there. But despite not having a long, sharp edge, it's a surprisingly deadly sword. It's a key, it's a sword, and it's also a wand. Sword can use it to cast all sorts of magic spells like a wizard. He can even shoot a laser beam all the way to the moon. Nice. Unfortunately, despite his newfound weapon, the Heartless were overwhelming. The darkness Use washed over Destiny Island, and people. just like that, it was gone. gone. But thanks to cosmic reasons, Sora wound up face to face with Goofy and Donald Duck. Yep, he ended had up had in the most magical place on Earth, Disney. If you're confused, don't worry. You are not hallucinating. Somehow, in some Somehow. way, this impossibility exists. Turns out, while Goofy and Donald have been lovable have cartoons for decades, cartoon for the they're also world-hopping warriors. Oh my god, this is the best thing ever! From then on, Sora teamed up with his new friends to the lock the doors to the hearts of worlds, well. saving like them from the heartless really grip. And he wasn't even old enough something. to get a driver's license. While Sora may not have been strong enough to yeah, save see, Destiny he Island, he quickly learned an enormous see, amount of talents see, perfect for beating back the darkness, that thing. including some genuine ass-kicking magic, like shooting fireballs, freezing baddies with blizzards, fighting with lightning, and more! He can reflect projectiles, manipulate time, magnetize objects, and even alter gravity. He's got a bunch of other magic attacks, but my favorite is Ragnarok, which fires a bunch of homing energy beams. Makes and sense. I guess he's got some magic abilities that don't involve beating monsters up, which I think is pretty lame, but Wiz insists we talk about it. Thanks to the Kingdom Key Sword, he can use spells which remove negative effects, including curing his own wounds. He can also glide hey, like Peter Pan and teleport like Figment. I still don't know if we should call it a sword. But Sora can make it even Turn better with keychains. They can even transform the whole Keyblade into more powerful versions with way more badass names, like Oathkeeper. With all Metal these abilities, Sora battled the Heartless and took the fight to the man who discovered them, Xanort. 
He even defeated Xanart's Heartless and his nobody. This is where it gets oh, really kind of hard. Wiz. Why are you calling him a nobody? He's definitely like 15 somebody. there. No, see, a nobody is a somebody without a heart. But a Heartless isn't a somebody or a nobody, though they may have been a somebody filled with anger. Like Scar from The Lion King. Well, I'm a somebody that's really, really confused. But to save all worlds, Sora found he had to be insanely strong, fast, and tough. He's speedy enough to run up a building, and quick enough to dodge magic lightning. Not just magic lightning, real legitimate lightning from the sky. Thunder a feat which could only take mere milliseconds. Sora put all that speed to good use once by perfectly blocking hundreds of lasers from damn near every angle in just a few seconds. Nice, nice. So it's safe to say he's no slouch. As for his strength, not only has he cut through giant building-like structures with ease, he's launched them as projectiles. -like Though gravity structures. is in flux here, a building this size normally weighs around 100,000 pounds. He's held back okay. two of Cerberus's heads and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hercules. You know, the demigod who threw a giant rock monster into space? <laughs> Although this titan's shape is too inconsistent to scale, by treating him as a series of cones made of granite, we can estimate his weight as over 1,600 tons. That's like throwing 200 T-Rexes into the Sage sky. Ice. So yeah, Herc is really, really strong, and Sora can take a hit from him, no problem. Strong. Honestly, Sora's ability to take a hit might be one of his strongest characteristics. He survived the jaws of Cerberus, ancient Chinese dragons, being shot by a musket, and, hell, the fires of Hades. But he isn't without his downfalls. While he's strong in his own right, he relies a lot on his friends. Like, Ooh, we all, lose the memories all the time. He can't even enter his fancy drive forms, which boost his power and give him an extra keyblade, without help from Goofy and Donald. So, in a broad scope. Okay. Sora's access the limit drive form on his own it's only served as a method of relearning basic, forgotten basic abilities. So we know that Pit can't fly without Palutena's assistance, so this could be where they even it out and give them both outside help, or neither one of them can do that. Limited on his own. No big deal, though. <laughs> Luckily for Sora, most blocks only need one key. Uh-huh. I'm not sure if that was profound. Or just stupid. Brad, you're stupid. The heart may be weak, and sometimes it may even give in. But I've learned that deep down there's a light that never goes out. Okay, from what I remember, um, they got Hallie Joel Osment uh, because the director saw The Sixth Sense and was just like, this kid is amazing. I can't understand a word he's saying because I don't speak English and I'm watching this in subtitles, but this kid is amazing. Is that, is that true? Is that how they cast him? <laughs> anyway, all right. Let us return to the distant past, to an age long ago, when gods <laughs> and man lived Hercules. together in harmony. How long ago was this? Uh, 25 years ago. What? Uh, anyway, yeah. the kingdom of Angel Land was ruled by two goddesses. Palutena, the goddess of light, and Medusa, the goddess of darkness. Who oh, pretty much treated everyone like crap by turning people into statues and destroying their crops. Ah, my cabbages! But hey, what'd you expect <laughs> from a being who holds the title the goddess guy. of darkness? She's just doing her job. Angered by these That's misdeeds, Palutena transformed Medusa into an ugly, one-eyed, parcel-tongued monster and banished her to the dark underworld. Yes. Talk about throwing shade! Long story short, Medusa waged war with Palutena, who summoned the greatest hero Angel Land has ever known. Hit! My arrows will stop that, Apricus Maximus! No, 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 definitely not that one. This one. Uh, Hi, hang on. childhood. Greatest hero ever? More like his mom needs to drop him off at elementary school. <laughs> Don't let looks fool you. Pitt may seem young, but he is the captain of the Icarus Army. Well Keepers the of the peace of and personal guards to Lady Palatina herself. Wait, you're telling me this Cupid-looking kid is the captain of an army? Well, at least he can fly with those wings. All right, that's pretty cool. Actually, no, he, he can't. can't. What? Look, he's flying right there. Well, Pitt may Please have superhuman abilities, but he can't actually fly on his own. Thankfully, Palutina regularly grants him mystic wings, which do allow flight, though they can only exist for up to five minutes. After that, they nice. burst into flame, sending Pitt careening to a horrible end. Holy shit! 
So the captain what? of an angel army doesn't have his own working angel wings. That's what you're telling me? Yeah, it's a little strange, but don't try to bring it up. He's a bit touchy on the subject. Anyway, Pitt managed to defeat Medusa, and everyone lived happily ever after. Okay. Just kidding, Medusa came back 25 years later, looking better than ever, by the way. And this time, Hades came along to mess things up, too. As captain of the Icarus army, Pitt has some extensive training huh. under his belt. How else would all these soldiers save Palutina from a sudden invasion of... vegetables? Uh, right. But what's a soldier without his weapons? Pitt's got a huge arsenal of weaponry. He's well known yeah, for his archery skills eyes. and shows it off with his trusty weapon of choice, the Palutina bow. This bow uses awesome laser arrows that can oh, that actually like be guided animation. by Pitt. And if his enemies get close, Pitt can split the bow into two short blades for quick deadly slices. Now that's a practical then weapon. He is strength? highly skilled with several classes of weapons. His arsenal has been imbued with the strength and power of the gods, making humans oh, incapable so of wielding them. Flat of his These head. range from orbitars, like floaty shoulder cannons that can also block attacks, to blades, cannons, claws, hammers, staves, clubs, and weaponized tattoos. Ah, oh, I wish my tattoo was a weapon. Uh, anyway, all these weapons As were forged by one? Mentos, the god of forge. Dentos. Dentos, the fresh maker. And the guy who also crafted Pitt's ultimate weapons. The okay. Growing up, I didn't the... have anyone who looked like me. That's why I no. started my no, blog no, no, no. to inspire no, 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 no. to be the Bad computer. The surface Video will play only after only ad! Content. I'm creating mood boards. I'm editing content. Oh my god! Makes you different because this does not make me want everyone. to purchase a Surface laptop. This makes me want to go to Microsoft Girl. and slap and some the guy people. who also crafted Pitt's ultimate weapons, the three sacred treasures. Hidden away in three sealed caskets, the sacred treasures consist of Angel Land's mightiest weapons, which can only be used by the most heroic and worthy of heroes. The mirror shield reflects projectiles. The wings of Pegasus give Pit unrestricted flight and improved speed. Oh. And the arrow of light is the ultimate weapon of the gods that can murder basically anything. The arrow of light is absolutely the deadliest weapon in Pit's arsenal and increases in power based on Pit's own health and strength. And when all three treasures come together, Pitt is granted the legendary silver armor. Uh, you uh, tapping into mustache of booze, Wiz? That's not silver. It's gold. Well, colors are different in heaven, I guess. Weird. <laughs> well, Pitt's learned Maybe several abilities throughout his adventures, like silver. healing, dropping mines, and making his arrows invisible. And all of his skills came in handy. Not only did he defeat Medusa, but he's taken on alien pirates. Does that mean their powers are limited, or he, he can't use them more than once? Until she decides on it again. Hmm. Flight is going to be considered outside help for this, unless he gets that treasure that lets A him do space that. kraken and the god of death, Thanatos. At one point when Thanatos attacked a village, he launched a large boulder which Pitt obliterated so thoroughly it was completely pulverized in midair. Wait a minute, how are those Trojan horse Star Wars walkie thingies not tipping over? Focus, Boomstick. <laughs> Pulverization is defined as reducing an object to dust, which certainly applies here. To determine the force necessary to do so, we first need the size of that boulder. Okay. For that, we'll compare the boulder to those pillars. Oh, here comes the math. Strap on your pocket protectors, nerds. Thanatos, when standing near to Pit, appears to be about 11 feet 6 inches tall. By comparing his okay. height to the pillars, we've determined them to be 18 feet tall. By comparing that to the boulder, it's clear it has a diameter of 115 inches. Okay. To pulverize a stone this large, Pit Strike must have outputted energy equal to nearly 1,600 pounds of TNT. Damn! Little angel kid can dish it out. Pitt's also incredibly quick. He was able to maneuver, react, and fly from the top of these clouds to the lunar sanctum in less than 40 seconds. Despite looking like one, that's no moon. It's a space station, orbiting the Earth at a similar altitude to the International Space Station. The All average right. distance from the ISS to the highest cloud layers is about 242 miles, meaning Pitt must have flown around 21,600 miles per hour. That's Mach 28! Suck it, star man! Not only that, Pitt dodged a laser which covered this distance in a fraction of a second, most likely moving a little over 90 million miles per hour. Oh, okay, so this is gonna directly counter Sora's uh, shot a laser to the moon in a second thing. 
Oh my god, that not moon thing really is the Death Star. With Pit's Galactic superhuman durability, feed, huh? he's tanked yeah, hits from gods and taken falls that would turn any normal man <laughs> into... An angel? Well, a dead man, yes. In his final duel with Hades, the god of the underworld, Pit took a devastating blow that sent him plummeting at least 2,000 feet. Given Pitt's weight, the impact of that fall would be over eight tons of force. And he was fine! This Hades guy can cut through giant diamond spires, so a hit from him could be as powerful as nearly 30 tons of TNT. Hey, of course, while Pitt may be that. formidable, he's not perfect. He ha Okay, Pitt has some fourth wall awareness, but has done nothing more than simply reference it. He cannot manipulate his own medium. Yeah, he basically just memes back and forth with Palutena. <laughs> has been tricked into losing Inverity. fights multiple times, and often relies on assistance from his godly allies. But this kick-ass angel isn't afraid to charge headfirst into a fight, even with his wings on fire. In the name of the goddess Palutena, the defender of all that is good, those who hide in the darkness will be made to face the light. Fly, man. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, all this talk At about slaves and vegetables has got me craving some heavenly food. <laughs> okay, well, it sounds kind of like... Huh. It's really going to depend on how far they take outside help. I think that's going to be the stickler here. If Sora can access his drives... Because that will require Donald and Goofy. How many Disney characters have they had in this? They've had um, Goliath from the Gargoyles. Uh, they had Scrooge McDuck. Who else have they had in Death Battle? Gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> They've had a heck of a lot of references to Disney's Hercules. You know, that was a good movie, but it just had absolutely nothing to do with Hercules. I mean, let, let's let's be honest with ourselves. That was just a brand new story. But then again, you know, neither did The Adventures of Hercules, and everyone loves that show as cheesy as it was. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, gosh, the the thing is, is that I kind of like in a straight up battle, it seems like Sora would win. But this is death battle, and we have rules about outside help. So, I honestly can't say. If Sora has access to all his drives, then he would win. Um, Pit, I think he's going to get around his flight limitation because the, of the Pegasus equipment that lets him fly unhindered. Um, but that didn't really seem to impact his power much. Um... Of course, I get an itchy leg when I'm on camera. Anyway, um, this really comes down to the meta, so I honestly could not tell you. So, yeah, I'm just going to move this up here a little bit. And let's start. Oh, oh yeah, okay, before, I think... Uh, it's funny, because didn't in the preview for this, they say what, one of Sora's uh, beaten opponents was Sephiroth, and that that wasn't brought up in this one. Sephiroth is the only foe in Kingdom Hearts 1 that I haven't beaten. Um, I've beaten the game. I've beaten uh, Kurt Ziza. I've beaten Phantom. Um, beaten Ice Titan somehow. Cannot beat Sephiroth at all. I, I, I just don't have the wherewithal to do so. I mean, I probably could have done so now if I had kept with it, but... <laughs> you know, just while well, well, my thoughts are still on Disney's Hercules, I gotta say I really like what they did with um, Philoctetes and his uh, Down to You song. Because, you know, DeVito is not going to be able to sing. So they gave him a very talky tune, very similar to Jimmy Durante. And I like I liked that they did that and it fit the character to have kind of almost a slack 
tune like that. <laughs> it was really neat. You know, that's some clever writing and casting and working with everyone that you have. That's really cool. And I, apparently they cast James Woods uh, because he was like, he gave the most unique. Everyone was also just trying to do all evil and grim. And he was all, hey, 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 he's Lord of the Dead. How y'all doing? Okay, back to this, though. Um, yeah, it, my brain is like a 16-lane highway, and trying to focus on a thought is like trying to focus on an individual car. Back to this, though. Um, a lot of the things they gave were kind of counters for each other, like the whole uh, pit is able to dodge light from... Oh, it wasn't quite at the distance of the moon, now that I think of it. They, yeah, they said it's the space station, and that's, oh, what, a fifth of the way to the moon? I don't even remember now. Blah. Okay, my brain is getting all bundled up and bunched and just skip ahead to the battle. I, I, I'm just going to start. I, I, this is really frustrating for me, okay? I haven't been able to sleep very well, so I can't string my thoughts together. Blah. Okay, but yeah, it seemed like there were a lot of counters to each other. Um, fraction of a second. I mean, anything is a fraction of a second. Even stuff that's longer than a second is a fraction of a second. You have to reduce that fraction. But just saying that Pitt could dodge this stuff in a fraction of a second doesn't really tell us exactly how fast it was. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hey, yeah, Go get him, pal! <laughs> what? What he said? So, whose rear am I kicking this time? <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. All in the arena, though. Well, I mean, it's not for this. Wait, kid, get out here. We have lined Take up. Take this. Fire. Whoa. You can't just jump out of the I've seen candles that are scarier than me.